Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness and today we're going to talk to you about another movement impairment called knee valgum. Again, we're trying to chronicalize or reference the major imbalances that we see in most people's movement patterns so you can be better aware of, of how you're moving in a distorted way that could be leading to injury. Now again, knee valgum in and of itself is not inherently going to hurt you if you let your knee dump in a little bit more, and that's essentially what it is. It means that your knee is dropping internally a little bit more than it should. So the knee tracking with the tibia and the femur, they're not lined up very well. And so there's this distortion where the knee slides off the edge of the femur, or excuse me, the tibia shelf, and the little meniscal horn that holds it there, the little, little suction cup basically, kind of deranges it and wears on it. Now, again, inherently one time dropping in like that, not a big deal, but if you're walking 10,000 steps a day, and you multiply that by your running and your cycling and your training, well, that puts a lot of force on that little structure. It starts to create some wear and tear. So it's called knee valgum. And what we do is we measure what's called the femoral angle. It's uh, the angle from how the, the hip is positioned to the middle of the ankle or the mortise of the ankle. Think tongue and groove mortise. That's a slope from the center of that hip down to the middle of the ankle of about seven degrees. Okay. Now with that resting position determined, if my knee drops in greater than 13 degrees from that angle, well that's considered a, a valgum. And that means that the knee is dropping too deep inside. And that typically we see people will, uh, will start to do strength exercises in their glute med, possibly again release their IT band, some other basic stuff locally to try to get that knee to travel a little bit better. But sometimes you're missing the big picture and recognizing that there's a lot of momentum from your canister, your trunk, acting on the limb. So remember in biomechanics you got two types of forces, linear and axillary. Linear is a weight transfer that's literally moving the system and translating that structure by making it slide or move in a plane without bending or rotating by using another structure to wedge it there, to move it there, and that's called accessory motion hypermobility. So if I have uncontrolled core canister mechanics and my hip tips open excessively because my oblique line's not strong enough, I can create a momentum into my leg and drive that femur in. And oftentimes that's seen because I have too strong of an oblique system or too strong of a glute and a hamstring, and that pulls the acetabulum or hip in, and it drags that knee into valgum. So a lot of times it's not necessarily the weakness of the glute med or even the glute max, which is oftentimes are targeted to remedy that, when in reality that's actually making it worse. It's actually the offset symmetry of the control of the oblique system and the control of the exiting load-bearing mechanics on the opposite side that's leading to that falling in of the knee leading to the valgum. So more of a translation than an axillary. So if, again, we understand the mechanics of how the body's moving, where the forces are being produced, and how they're being translated to segments of the body, we can start to laser in on the thing that's actually the culprit, rather than addressing the deficits or the symptoms that emerge because of the distortion. So once again, this is just broadening your perspective on another common movement impairment, get you to draw your attention to maybe a bigger picture of global integration rather than local. So remember, we always think global, not local. And again, understand how to correct for it by doing the right thing. Questions on any of this stuff, make sure to reach out, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Let's keep the conversation going. And remember, check out our uh, Facebook group, uh, Fluid Mechanics or Fluid Biomechanics for um, Movement Mastery. This is, a, again, an awesome forum where we're sharing information as a group, transferring knowledge, talking about principles and concepts, and really understanding the essence, the essential nature of these things. So again, guys, make sure to check that out and subscribe so we can get you into the discussion. And every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to have a discussion on one of these key topics, and we're going to have uh, subject matter experts in their fields come in and talk to you guys about this stuff. So look out for that stuff. It's coming down the pipe. Love to have you a part of that. So make sure, again, Fluid Biomechanics for Movement Mastery on Facebook. Check it out. Talk to you guys soon.